Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Microbiology with Sumi. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell icon for the latest upcoming Today's topic is on isolation of anaerobic microorganisms. So let's start with it. Anaerobic microorganisms. Let's see a short introduction. Anaerobic microorganisms are the organisms which do not require oxygen as an energy source to carry out their metabolism. So basically in nature there are two types of microorganisms. First one is aerobic microorganism and second is anaerobic microorganisms. Aerobic microorganisms require oxygen for their growth, multiplication and metabolism. Okay, Whereas anaerobic microorganisms are the microorganisms which do not require oxygen as a source of energy and in absence of oxygen they can easily carry out their metabolism and synthesis cell synthesis okay further in simple words anaerobic microorganisms do not require oxygen for their growth and multiplication in fact anaerobic microorganisms are the microorganisms that have a negative effect of oxygen and that is they do not survive in presence of oxygen so anaerobic microorganisms show a drastic effect when they are exposed to oxygen and that is these anaerobic microorganisms get killed they do not survive in presence of oxygen whereas aerobic microorganisms require oxygen for their survival further let's see examples of anaerobic microorganisms so here are some examples Actinomycetes, Clostridium, Propionobacterium, Bifidobacterium, Bacteroids, Fusobacterium and Prevotella. So these are some examples of anaerobic microorganisms. Let's talk about isolation of anaerobic bacterium. The isolation and cultivation of aerobic and facultative anaerobic microorganism is easy as compared to anaerobic microorganism. So the procedures that are carried out in isolation and cultivation of aerobic and facultative anaerobic microorganisms are quite easy. But when we talk about anaerobic microorganisms, we have to use some special techniques, some special procedures to isolate and cultivate this anaerobic microorganisms. Isolation and cultivation of strictly anaerobic microbes require a special technique, equipment and nutrient medium. Some anaerobic microorganisms grow in complete absence of oxygen, whereas there are few anaerobic microorganisms that can tolerate small amount of oxygen if they are exposed to air. Now see, in anaerobic microorganisms also there are some anaerobic microorganisms that are strictly anaerobic in nature. If by mistake they get exposed to oxygen, they die, they don't survive. But there are some anaerobic microorganisms that they are able to tolerate small amount of oxygen. If by mistake they get exposed to oxygen, they can survive in that condition. There are various methods like Wright's tube method, Brewer's Petri dish method, vacuum and gas displacement method that are known for isolation of anaerobic bacteria. Further, but the, but the most popular method that is used in isolation of anaerobic microbes is candle method and the gas packed anaerobic jar method. So in this video, we are going to talk about candle method. And in my next video, I will upload details about gas pack anaerobic jar method. Now let's see candle method that is used for isolation of anaerobic microorganisms. This method is based on lighted candle that is placed in a glass jar and the glass jar is tightly sealed with the Vaseline. So here in this method simply a glass jar is used. In this glass jar the plates are placed that is a Petri uh, plates on which we have isolated the mic uh, microorganism and we want to cultivate that microorganism. So the plates are placed, then the candle is lighted and the glass jar is tightly sealed with the help of Vaseline. Here when the candle stops burning it indicates that oxygen has been used. So this is a normal logic 
that fire burns only in presence of oxygen so once the candle stops burning it indicates that the oxygen has been used up and an aerobic condition is created now let's see the requirements first is candle match box bacterial culture bell jar now this candle jar uh, is also called as the bell jar nutrient agar play let's see the procedure streak the culture on two nutrient agar plates keep one plate in the incubator and other plate inside the bell jar so here you have to take two sterile nutrient agar plates and streak inoculate the given bacterial culture on this both plates after inoculating the culture keep one plate in the incubator and other plate inside the bell jar place a burning candle inside the bell jar and close the lid of the jar and wait for some time so once you keep the inoculated nutrient agar plate inside the bell jar you have to place a burning candle and seal the bell jar completely or properly and then you have to wait for some time further the candle will stop burning due to lack of oxygen and production of carbon dioxide so once the candle stop burning it is assumed that oxygen is used up and as a result of burning of this candle carbon dioxide is produced generally this method is recommended for growth of nizeria this method is considered as too toxic method used for isolation of anaerobic microorganism as carbon dioxide is produced due to burning of candle so this method is uh, easy method but this is toxic also because as a result of burning of that candle carbon dioxide is produced and this carbon dioxide can harm this anaerobic microorganisms after incubation observe both the plates and compare the growth so after incubation we have to take out the plate from the bell jar as well as from the incubator we have to compare the growth of this both microorganisms that we have incubated now here in a diagrammatic representation you can see the candle jar now this glass jar is called as candle jar as well as bell jar so in this diagram you can see petri plates with solid media is placed in this jar as well as tubes with liquid media is also placed in this jar after placing this tubes and petri plates a burning candle is placed in this jar now once this burning candle and this jar is sealed uh, okay and after sealing this jar once this burning candle stops burning it is assumed that the oxygen has completely utilized okay and an aerobic condition is let's see the result here there are two possibilities if the isolated microorganism is aerobic in nature then induced growth of microorganism will be observed on plate kept outside the bell jar that is the plate kept inside the incubator as compared to the plate kept inside the jar so in simple words if the isolated microorganism is aerobic in nature you will observe induced growth of this microorganisms on the plate that is kept in the incubator when you compare this plate to the plate that is kept in bell jar okay so because these microorganisms are aerobic and they will survive in presence of oxygen and oxygen is present in the incubator as compared to the bell jar so in bell jar we are going to maintain completely an aerobic condition so the aerobic microorganism will not survive in the bell jar okay and the second possibility is if the microorganism that are isolated are anaerobic in nature then induced growth of microorganism will be observed on the plates that are kept inside the jar as compared to the plates kept in the incubator so the plate that is kept in the bell jar will show growth of that microorganism because that microorganisms are anaerobic in nature as well as the plate which uh, that is kept in the incubator will show no growth or less growth of that microorganism so this is the third so if you like my video please like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching